Street. This week, our story takes us to West Africa in 1970, to the former secessionist state of Biafra. And luckily, we have our resident history buff, Jeff Abramowitz, in studio. Jeff, hello and welcome, and thank you for joining me. Thank you. Uh, I'd like to start by quoting the Bible, okay. which is not something I do often or even at all, for that matter, uh, from the book of Ecclesiastes. That which has been shall be. That which has been done shall be done. There is nothing new under the sun. So how does that connect to Biafra? Because we are talking about a civil war, the Nigerian civil war, which was one of the world's great humanitarian crises of its time, still resonates in Africa. It was a war when uh, the eastern part of Nigeria, which was mainly Christian, dominated by the Igbo tribe, broke away from, from Muslim-dominated West Nigeria, its own state, Biafra, fought a brutal, bitter war, held out for three years, but then was starved into submission. The estimates are that a million people died in three years. I'm going to say that again. One million people. At one stage, they were estima estimating 3,000 to 5,000 people a day. I just want to draw our viewers' attention to the photos on the screen of uh, these, these poor, starving children. This is the thing. Nobody paid much attention to the war. Right. It was just Africans fighting each other, which, at the risk of being labeled a racist, was what the West was used to seeing throughout the 1960s. But then photographers got into Biafra and took these photographs and brought, especially a man called Donald McCullen, but not only here. They brought back photographs of the starving, of the dying, and the conscience of the world was outraged. Now, Nigeria put a blockade on Biafra, a total blockade. They were helped by Russia and a Western state I won't mention, but I will say that the British cabinet papers of the time make very interesting reading. No medicine or food could get into Biafra. People starved. There were relief flights coming in, but not enough to keep them alive. There were missionaries in Biafra who did amazing work. The, I think it was the Irish Holy Ghost Order. I, if I get the name wrong, I apologize. I'm not that clued up on Irish Catholic orders. That's all right. But they did amazing work. And the organization Doctors Without Borders so how was, was founded that? as a result of Biafra. The conscience of the world, these pictures, the pictures we saw of the starving children, it was the great humanitarian cause of the day. And now pictures like these are used all around the world to try to convince people to donate money to Africa. And right. This is the um, beginning the luck or bad luck was that there weren't a bunch of um, egomanical pop stars to sing a song about them, but they, were star they died, they didn't survive. All right, Jeff Abramowitz, thank you so much for joining me today.